Hey there, movie enthusiasts. Today, let's dive into the gritty world of The Dirty Dozen, a 1967 film that packs a punch. No fancy talk, just the facts. This classic flick revolves around a bunch of misfit soldiers on a suicide mission during World War II. It's got action, drama, and a cast stacked with Hollywood heavyweights. Now, here's the hook stick around because we've got some funny, shocking, and sad facts about the making of this movie. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Now, let me throw a couple of questions your way. What do you think makes The Dirty Dozen stand the test of time? And who's your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this one? And here's the kicker, we want to hear your stories and memories related to this film. Drop them in the comments below. Your experiences could be the missing piece to our Dirty Dozen puzzle. So, grab your popcorn and let's get into the nitty gritty of this cinematic gem. Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. During the late 1960s, a certain movie hit the screens, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Directed by Robert Aldrich, it featured a group of unlikely heroes thrust into a dangerous mission. Although opinions on the film were mixed at first, its gritty portrayal of convicts turned soldiers struck a chord with viewers. Following its release, the movie sparked a wave of similar stories across various media. It wasn't just about the big screen. The characters and themes found their way onto action figures, posters, and other merchandise delighting fans. This movie's influence didn't stop there. Its premise of assembling a team of unconventional individuals became a recurring theme in subsequent films and TV shows. The idea of unlikely allies banding together for a common goal became a staple in storytelling. In the end, this movie left its mark on popular culture, inspiring countless adaptations and merchandise. Its legacy lies on, proving its significance in cinematic history. In 1967, a film featuring Telly Savalas, born on the same day as Benny Hill, made a mark. This movie, as per Guinness, emerged as the top-grossing film of the year in the U.S. and Canada. However, Jack Palance, despite his stature, declined the role of Archer Maggot due to disapproval of the character's racist undertones and what he perceived as excessive violence in the film. Telly Savalas, sharing a birthday with Benny Hill, whose impersonation of Savalas' Kojak character gained fame on The Benny Hill Show in 1969, adds an interesting connection. Guinness, the authority on records, highlights the financial success of the film in 1967, labeling it the leading money earner in the US and Canada. Yet, Jack Palance, a respected figure, chose not to partake in the movie, citing concerns over the character's racial elements and the perceived surplus of violence. In a year of triumphs, controversies also found a place in the narrative. These behind-the-scenes decisions and connections contribute to the layers within the story, offering a glimpse into the dynamics that shaped the Dirty Dozen. Filmed in various locations across England, primarily in Hertfordshire, the Dirty Dozen's training sequences unfolded at Hendon Aerodrome, situated about seven miles north of central London. The film's besieged shadow, a pivotal setting, took shape at MGM's British studios in Boreham Robert Ryan, a notable figure in the movie, earned recognition for his involvement in three films selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. These films, namely The Naked Spur, Bad Day at Black Rock, and The Wild Bunch, were deemed culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Adding a layer of authenticity to the cast, Cleveland Brown's fullback Jim Brown took on the role of Jefferson. Director Robert Aldrich, a football enthusiast, expanded Brown's part due to the athlete's substantial presence and passion for the sport. In a cinematic journey that weaves together intense training, strategic missions, and a diverse ensemble cast, The Dirty Dozen stands as a testament to the skills of those involved. Did you know that Telly Savalas, the actor who played Archangel in a famous movie from 1967, became well known for more than just that role? In 1990, a movie called The Marcus Nelson Murders was officially named the movie of New York City, and Telly got the key to the city for his part in it. This movie introduced his character, Lieutenant Theo Kojak, who later got his own TV show called Kojak. There's an interesting story about how the character's name changed from the book to the movie. Originally, he was called Napoleon White, but in the movie, they changed it to Robert Jefferson. Strangely, in the trailer for the movie, they called him Napoleon Jefferson, which didn't match either. One funny detail is in a scene where Jefferson is supposed to throw grenades. Someone shouts at him, remember Jefferson 20 seconds, but in reality, grenades explode much faster, usually in less than 6 seconds. These little details give us a peek into the behind the scenes of the Dirty Dozen, showing us more than just the story on screen. In 1967, a memorable film united a group of tough actors, each with their own fascinating backgrounds. 
One of them, a seasoned performer, had a biography featured in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives that covered a significant period in American cinema. Another actor, known for his intense demeanor, stumbled into acting unexpectedly, but soon made his mark on both television and film. And then there was the third actor, frequently referenced in a popular film in 1992, whose name became synonymous with a tough character. Their stories converged in a movie that has left a lasting impression on cinematic history. Their individual journeys and talents contributed to a gritty and engaging narrative that unfolded on screen. It's remarkable how each of them brought their own unique flavor to the movie, creating an unforgettable viewing experience. During the filming of The Dirty Dozen, the production schedule extended so much that Jim Brown risked missing the upcoming football season's training camp. The NFL threatened to fine and suspend him if he didn't leave filming immediately. Consequently, Brown retired from football, despite being considered one of the best players at the time and still being revered as one of the NFL's all-time greats. Ernest Borgnine, a cast member of the Dirty Dozen, made notable appearances at the Academy Awards in 1998 and 23 participating in the Oscar winner's tribute sequence. The movie received an Italian censorship visa on November 2, 1967. In 1967, a filmmaker named Stuart Cooper introduced a movie that made a big impact on movies. In the film, some characters spoke German, which made their roles more authentic. Donald Sutherland unexpectedly joined the cast when another actor turned down a role. This decision turned out to be important for the film's success. The Dirty Dozen, as it was called, was loved by audiences for its exciting story and great acting. It left a lasting impression on action movies. Back in the late 1980s, Charles Bronson was supposed to play Colonel Nick Alexander in a movie called The Delta Force. But when the film happened, Lee Marvin got the role, and George Kennedy was also part of it. During World War II, some American soldiers who did wrong ended up in Shepton Mallet Prison in England. This place was open for a really long time, from winning 1625 to 2013, and it saw some dark times. Nine U.S. military folks got executed there during the war, three by firing squad and six by hanging. Albert Pierpoint, the guy who did the hangings, did about 450 in his career, including 200 Nazis at the Nuremberg Trials. In the middle of all this, Ralph Meeker played a big part. You can read about his life from 1986 to 1990 in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives. All these stories connect in a way, showing us a glimpse of the people involved in movies and history. It's like each piece adds to the bigger picture of that time.